It seems the tug of war concerning the recruitment of 10,000 constables is more serious than we thought, as the Police Service Commission has taken the Nigerian police to court, and the court has added again. The rift between the national chairman of the All Progressive Congress, Adams of Shomole, and governor of the Doe State, Godwin Abasaki, seems to be deepening, and the presidency doesn't seem to care. This is Plus Politics, and I am Felicity Ezewike. It seems the tussle between the Police Service Commission and the Nigerian Police Force is not ending anytime soon. Justice Yang Ekwo of the Federal High Court has ordered the Inspector General of Police, Muhammad Adamu, to maintain status quo in respect of the interim order issued against the recruitment of 10,000 police officers. The Police Service Commission had previously taken the Nigerian police to court over the recruitment. Joining us in the studio is a political analyst, Francis Chilaka. A pleasure to have you join Thank us. Thank you very much. They've gone to court again. This is not the first time. Apparently, it's not going to be the last time. But of what use is it if the police have already done the recruitment and as we understand, they're already at the training camp? I think we need to start from um, the basics by asking questions. Who is responsible for recruitment in the Nigerian police? If we don't define roles, what is the role of the Police Service Commission and what is the role of the IG in all of this? Well, from, the, from what I do understand is that the AGF has come up to say there seems to be um, an ambiguity that is being exploited by both parties. But in this particular instance, mm -hmm. the, what I'd like to find out is what's the point of a court case if the police has gone ahead to recruit this people. Well, you know that it's the duty of the Police Service Commission to, they, first of all, their, their job is to monitor the police. They're also responsible for recruitment of police other than the IG. In other words, they're supposed to work hand in gloves with the IG. So if somewhere along the line there's a disagreement, I think that the normal thing that should have happened is for the IG to step low and settle whatever the differences are with the Police Service Commission. But what you have right now is a situation where everybody is wielding power. The Police Service Commission is trying to say, it is our responsibility to do this. The IG is trying to say, I am in charge of this. And it's, it's been playing out in our political life, you know, where people do not know when, where and how to draw boundaries. So that's the problem. Now, they went to court initially, and the court said everybody should... Stay action. Yeah, the IG should have listened to, should have obeyed the court order. So what's the point of the court order? The question still begs for an answer. Yeah, if they've gone ahead to do what they want, I mean the police, um, IG, mm -hmm. what they wanted to do, and the court has ruled now to... There's been no final ruling, just stay action. But they're not staying action. Then it shows the impunity in the system. It's not only the IG, it's an impunity in the entire system. Okay. You see, the National Assembly will invite a minister and the minister will refuse to go. I mean, I read, I read, I read the other time the, 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 the Speaker of the House was saying that he, he will report the ministers to the President for not... I mean, it's, there, there's a defined role for everybody in governance. It's just for people to learn to understand that they must follow due process. So if the Police Service Commission is saddled with the responsibility of over, uh, like an oversight function over the police, the saddled with the responsibility of em employment and engagement of police officers, the IG should respect them. Uh, well, there seemed to be um, this argument from a group of people, some people, um, staff of the um, Police Service Commission mm -hmm. uh, under the ages of Nigerian Civil Service Union, PSC chapter, led by um, a secretary, that's o Ogun Deji. He said that the PC and the IG were both working on the recruitment exercise together before the commission was no longer carried along so why were by they not carried Adam. Along? So could this explain the whole saga as something about being left out of the spoils and what would be <laughs> this spoils? 
Well, they're not, they're not, you see, they're not telling us what the spoils are, but we all know that it's all about vested interest. It's all about vested interest. So it's probably that the Police Service Commission have the particular number of persons they want to push into the police. The IG has his own number. So I'm sure along the line, the figures didn't add up. But I would say this to the IG. It is proper for us as Nigerians to learn to obey court orders. It helps for sanity. It helps for, you know, communal living. If the police are responsible for ensuring that Nigerians are law-abiding, then the IG should be, you know, he should lead by example. No matter what differences they have, he should obey the court order first. Then they should go back to the drawing board. I'm sure that they'll be able to find a middle way out of this. Okay, let's see if we can explore other areas of this conversation. The presidency has spoken earlier when approached on this matter, saying, urging both parties to, you know, try and reconcile their differences amicably. But isn't it time for him to take a tougher stance, considering that this bickering has gone on too long and there is another recruitment coming up? How are we going to? tackle that if we do not resolve this issue now? Should the president be more active in this matter? I think, I think what the Police Service Commission has done is the right thing. Um, they, didn't, they, they don't have to start going on news and in, uh, creating so much uh, nuisance, but they've done the right thing by going to court, which is where this whole thing should be resolved. So I think what the Police Service Commission really wants is for the court to pronounce who responsibility it is when it comes to recruitment. That is what I think they want to do. Yeah, so I think the war between the, the Police Service Commission and the IG is whose responsibility is it? But the, 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 the laws setting up both establishment is quite clear. Even the AGF seem to be in support with the action of, it says the final appointment would be given by the PSC, but they should allow the IG of police to continue with the process of recruitment. This was a, his advice to the president as, as September. We're now in November. Why is it taking so long to have this, at least, let's have, it, it's not a new uh, situation, but would expect a more decisive action from the presidency. Well, I think, I think issues can actually be resolved when the problems are put on the table. The Police Service Commission have not come out formally to say, this is our grounds. The IG is also not saying this is the problem. But all we know is that there is a problem. You can't solve a problem that you do not know the source or the root of the problem. So the two arms they cannot work in conflict. They need to work together. Whatever it is that is causing the issue, they should lay it out open to everybody to know so that people can actually give them advice. But the, thing, the truth of the matter is that there is something hidden that nobody is saying. What is this hidden thing? You, you mentioned something about reviewing maybe the I, I, laws I, setting I, them I, I, up. I, I think it's, it's a normal thing that happens in every establishment when it comes to employment. Everybody has vested interest. But should that be the case? Should we now be um, um, putting um, self-interest at the expense of the interest of Nigeria's credible problem, hands? This is the problem of a quota system. But even with the quota system, if all, I understand this entirely... All they, need to do, see, all they need to do is to say, we want to get 10,000 police officers. Divide it across board. That has been done. That has been done. You and I know that has been done. Across the 36 states, there are supposed to be certain quarters for each, each state. And it, in a way, if you look at it, this time around, the federal character system is even playing in the favor because it allows you to scrutinize from each local government the number of persons that are supposed to come out, emerge from. And then in a state, you know how many that that is supposed to be. But in this case, we see a lopsided uh, arrangement, presentation from different parts of the country. How are we going to Two pick? elephants are fighting. Who suffers most? The grass. It's all about power tussle. This issue of power tussle is eating up the fabric of Nigeria. Like I keep saying, until you make certain offices uninteresting, Financially, things will not work in this country. 
Okay, can, let's, let's explore the area of the law you were talking about. Can the National Assembly play a role here? Because even the AGF has suggested that we should review the, the law establishing vote and maybe adjust the constitution at to some point. Is well, that a solution? Well, and will this assembly well, do we it? talk about the National Assembly, honestly, I would say that I do not even think we have one right now. Why would you say that? They're, I don't, new, I don't they're say, a new body. We have a nice How many months down the line? I, you see, when people tell me new, 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 and I keep asking, check the whole of Lagos State. The roads are all bad. Go to Imo State. The roads are all bad. Go to Edo State. The same thing. These people are not working. And people sit down and they're telling me they are new. How long will they be new? How long do you want but to be But that does not new? mean that we don't have a national I don't, I don't, assembly. I haven't seen them in action. But you were here, the elections were conducted. We do have people that are supposed to be representing us at the National Assembly. But they're not representing us. This is see, This issue shouldn't really go out of hand the way it is going right now. So what would because you don't forget, Don't forget that the National Assembly has a committee that has oversight, oversight function. What are they doing? Why must we in this country allow things to go bad before we begin to find solution to it? This issue should have been nipped in the bud. I've been issue. When it all started, the committee responsible for oversight function over the Nigerian police should have called these two bodies to order. Okay, now that we have this situation, um, let's, let's look futuristic now. Um, we have another recruitment of 10,000 constables in 2020. 2020 is just two months away. Which is true. Do you see an end in sight to this um, situation that we have now that will be resolved ahead of the next batch? Because whether we like it or not, this recruitment batch has been done. The solution to all this thing is when you sit down and define rules for people. And you, are, you make sure that everybody understands their own roles and responsibilities. When you keep having a situation where you have um, a law that says that Police Service Commission is responsible for recruitment, and then you have another law that says that the IG has powers to call people into training, it doesn't add up. You can't, you can't rob Peter to pay Paul. So basically, what, the, what we need right now, like everybody keeps saying, is that it's not just looking at the law setting up the um, Police Service Commission and all of that. We need to sit down as people, as Nigerians, and look at this 1999 Constitution. Everything that is going wrong in this country is centered on the 1999 Constitution. A lot of things in that Constitution does not add up. A Constitution that, that does not hold a governor accountable, that does not make a governor accountable to the people, do you see this crop of leadership having that kind of strength to call for a, um, a review of the Nigerian constitution? The Nigerian constitution can easily be reviewed. How? Political will. That is one. That's the question. Two, I, do we have that? It's not that we have that. We have leaders who, we don't have leaders rather, we have rulers. Until Nigerians begin to think in terms of leadership. Leadership means carrying people along. Leadership means growing other people to take after you, mentoring people. We don't have such people in Nigeria anymore. The leaders we have, or the rulers we have today, are thinking of themselves. Greedy, selfish. That is why nothing is working in this country. We need to begin to think as a nation. If we really want Nigeria, we need to begin to think out of the box. We need to begin to think Nigerians. How have other countries developed? Everybody in Nigeria is talking of um, Rwanda, Rwanda. How did it start? This is a country that just came out of war. But today they are becoming the giant of Africa. Why? Because the people have sat down to say, we must, as a people, take our country to the next level. Nigerians are not thinking that way, especially those who call themselves leaders. They are not thinking in terms of, you know, the future of Nigeria. It's today, today, today. Everybody wants today. It's all about how much money, how much wealth, people want to amass. Okay, let's, let's look at another aspect to this conversation. There was um, allegations, some um, national dailies reported that some of the candidates that were recruited, that were supposed to go for training, were asked to pay, I think, um, 11,000 naira for training, um, for the training kit, in spite of the fact that monies have been allocated to this. It goes back to the um, question I asked about spoils.
Is there rabid corruption as is being speculated in the entire police system? And is this a manifestation of a far deep, deeper rooted um, uh, menace that the presidency is actually saying he is trying to fight? For these young men that don't have money and women to pay 11,000 naira. Well, um, you know, when, when we talk about people seeking employment and are being made to part with money, it didn't start today. It happened with immigration. We all know how, what happened, and we know how many people lost their lives in the process. If the IG or the Police Service Commission has come out to say, pay 11,000, it's unfunded right now. It's an alleged, it's been alleged. Now, the question I'm going to also ask, which I'm going to throw to the National Assembly, why are our honorable members and senators sitting idly and closing their eyes to all of this? Why, would they, why were they elected to represent us? They are supposed to be the mouthpiece of Nigerians who are unemployed. But you're sort of Let contradicting yourself no, here. No, no, because no, no. earlier you said yes. that we did not have a national assembly and no. that you don't believe that these people are working. And now you're putting the blame, uh, I mean... No. As long as you still have them there. For a lot of people, they have a national assembly. Okay. I will believe we have a national assembly when they begin to work. But I'm saying that so long as we have people who have been elected as senators and honorable members, they should be the mouthpiece of the unemployed Nigerians. They should be the mouthpiece of suffering Nigerians. I expect them at this point in time to say, good, this is what we've heard. Investigate it to the end. And let Nigerians know. The unfortunate thing is that even in the journalistic world, we do no longer have investigative journalism in Nigeria. We just have the newspaper headlines will come up today, it ends there. Nobody follows up the story to tell us how it all ended. So it's an alleged um, that people are asked to pay money. It is not my duty to find out. No, 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 no. The paper, I just, I'm just being subtle here. The paper actually spoke with people who told them in their own words, they are repeating what these recruits said. Again, if they go and say the name of these recruits, the tendency is there that they will be victimized. It comes back to the fact that it is still an alleged. Nobody has confirmed it. It is not my duty to do the investigation. We have people, we have organs that should do that. EFCC is busy running after Yahoo Yahoo boys. This is something they should get involved in. Okay, let's, let's look at it from another perspective. Let's say um, something happens and then there was a ruling and then um, the courts dismantled this entire process that the uh, police force has embarked on recruiting 10,000 people. What becomes of these recruits who have gone through all this process to become police officers in Nigeria? You, it's the negligence of the two bodies. I believe that there's a solution. And the solution is that the two bodies should sit down on a round table. They cannot use, they cannot because of their ego and allow Nigerians to suffer. So they should all, you know, eat their pride, eat their pies, and sit down and say, okay, what is this problem? Let us resolve it for the sake of Nigerians, for the sake of Nigerians who are seeking for employment. So if they refuse to do that, then it comes back to the fact that these people are not interested in the growth and development of Nigeria. Do you see an end to this entire situation? Do you see a resolution, so to speak? For me, there's, the resolution is, all, is already there. Do you see a willingness? Do you ever see a point where both parties will come together and accept to share responsibility for this? When both parties refuse to do that, Mr. President should remove the IG and remove members of the Police Service Commission. Isn't there a process for that? Who appointed them? Send them send a send memo to the National Assembly. Because what we see right now is crass arrogance, negligence of duty. But the, what about the role of the presidency? Staying silent in the face of all of this? Because it's, we it's, have the, the fate of 10,000 The, the presidency has always been silent security. on a lot of issues. This is not the first time. So it, it, it doesn't make any difference. The president has always been silent. The president will only come up when, it's, um, when issues have gone beyond everybody. But I think that this issue can still be resolved between the police, the Police Service Commission, and the National Assembly. What about the conduct of the exercise? What was your overall impression of the conduct of the recruitment for these constables? 
to be sincere, I, I, I didn't really bother myself um, spending time reading about it. I'm only interested in the fact that it's an opportunity for Nigerians to be gainfully employed. And I'm throwing a challenge to the IG. Don't just pick people and throw into the police force. Pick people who would respect the rule of law. Pick people who would defend Nigerians when there's time for that. Thank you very much, Sam, for sharing your thoughts on Thank this you. program. Right, we go on a short break, and when we come back, we'll be talking about the tug of war between the national chairman of the All Progressive Congress, Adam Sushimole, and Governor of Edo State, Godwin Obaseki. Do stay with us.